that off. And the only way to do that is by somehow lowering A, which is wages. So we have to go and create war to occupy another area or to occupy an area for tariffs that reduce taxes or reduce anything that allow us to go into another territory for them to be able to produce goods and services at a lower price for us to be able to consume those prices. But that's just a portion, something that I wanted to kind of bring out that might need to be touched on in the future. Um, Tim. I'd like to reflect on the dynamic that Aaron was talking about underlying the three-fifths compromise and how it was broader, how it, and as you pointed out, how it institutionalized uh, gender bias. And it, it, it wasn't just about what it was about explicitly. And it seems to me that that is that has just been recapitulated almost as perfectly as it could possibly have been. If you wanted to do a three-fifths compromise today, and serve the whole, the underlying dynamic, what could have been better than the Citizens United decision? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have some people who can vote. The detention. What could, be, what could be better? Citizens United is pretty bad. Right. But the indefinite detention of citizens. Yeah. Just right. because they're Muslim or they're right. terrorists. Right. All of us are in this room. We're all affected. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Be focused on a narrow. Sorry, but I meant well, I'll, I'll buy that. The, uh, but the, the, the franchise, given that things have evolved to a point where elections are so much about money, we've in effect given a small group a lot more votes. Right. And, and it's kind of a zero sum game. So by giving them a lot more votes, we just, we've. Uh, Diminish the voting power uh, of the rest. How that? I absolutely disagree for this reason. If we buy into it and say, "Well, it's all about money," and they're buying the election and they're doing this, and it keeps us from pulling the lever, yeah, then that works. But the same thing is true as always been true. All of us are enfranchised. Each of us may <coughs> exercise their franchise at every election. And it is only that we don't that we wind up with what we have. For example, people are screaming about term limits. Well, we're the term limiters. If it's the case that I want the same common council right. member for 100 years, that's my gig. Yeah. So while it is the case that there's more money, while it is the case that there's more in influence, none of us have lost the power that we have. Should we choose to buy into that and not exercise it is a completely different story. Uh, Point of clarification. Yeah, that's, um, hold on. Uh, so we have a few people who want to talk. Um, I'd love, you have to have a back and forth here because you're speaking directly to each other. So let's go. Tim, I'm sorry, what's your name? Nora. Nora. So let's give Tim and Nora a chance to, Tim respond and Nora respond. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> let's go to um, um, Calissa and anyone that I saw the hands up. And back to Darren, anyone else? Yeah. Oh, I just had one, but uh, at the end I'll say <laughs> okay, it's so that we already one, answered. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Okay. I have a question. Sir. Going in this What's order. your question, sir? Okay. What will happen after the end of history? At the end of what? History. history. Yeah, at the end of history, as you mentioned. <laughs> it's like the end of Very science. Quickly, the idea of the end of history is that there will be no more new things. So humans would sort of exhaust the new. Oh, we would simply do like things. So ironically, in relation to Hegel, is at the end of history we become Asiatic. <laughs> <laughs> so that's only some European like history, though. So, so one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. We have five speakers, and then we can go back to you, sir. Okay. The, um, the idea that each of us is enfranchised, I think, is, is uh, to a considerable extent, an illusion. Uh, if I can walk into the voting booth and I can either vote for 
George Bush, George Bush in a red sweater, <laughs> or George Bush in a green sweater, uh, then mm. I'm not a trans child. Because of the way the system has evolved, it, it takes so much money to get a name onto the voting machine. Uh, the, the people that I want to vote for, the ideas that I want to vote for, may or may not be there too much. <laughs> Write him in. I'm sorry? Write him in. Each of us may go in, demand of any of our local voting machine people the ability to write it in. Now, you and I, I get what you're saying. I truly do. Yes, I have many times gone to the voting machine, held my nose, and pulled the lever. I get what you're saying. But it is not the case that, A, the only thing we have to do is that. Yes. And you can say you're wasting a vote or whatever, but from a personal perspective, you can write in what you want to. But more importantly, and I think that this is where people like us, okay, people who will come to a dome and talk about these things on New Year's Eve. Responsibility to bring the people we want elected forward. So if you don't like who's on the ballot, then day after election day, you start working for the person you like. I don't buy the, they have to give me who I think I might want to vote for. My gig, my country, my vote, I'll pick who I want to. Let me see if I can recapture my thought. It was off of the economic topic. Um, I think, well, I was in here for the dome warming and they were talking about mm -hmm. Buck, Mr. Buck, Mr. Fuller, and the kind of crux of the discussion was basically like paradigm change, mm -hmm. right? Like obsolescence was the big word that kept coming yeah. up. And the ideas that you were kind of spinning out, like, you know, you have to pay this, you have to balance that, you have to, we need a new way of looking at it. You know, you don't have to consume. Look at, you know, I mean, I mean, like the presumptions or assumptions that we're operating on are really outdated mm -hmm. and outmoded and need to be changed so that we can forge forward to a, what are you calling a, a, a the new a history, what are you calling a history of universal, universal history, of universal where history. everyone is treated and acknowledged with <coughs> respect and the voices are equal at the table. You know, the, the, the <coughs> icky process of general assembly and consensus is that it's very hard to you know balance all these diverse needs just in a room of the type of people who come on New Year's Eve <laughs> you know to a dome to talk about these things we have so many d d different viewpoints in just this in a lot of different times I've come down here you know um, and you're talking about how many billion trillion people in the world I mean seven trillion I think what we really need to do is step back and get an look at look, look at anthropology for some of our paradigms and nature you know how does how do we fit into nature we're animals we must not forget we eat and excrete you know we breathe and we're exchanging oxygen with trees we're part of a, an ecosystem and we like to forget that so if you remember that and then we look at ourselves as anthropological creatures. You know, you don't have to change everything by every fashion every two years or every year have a new kind of shoes. You know, you might like to. Does that make you happy? Well, you know, you got to look at the whole system of, you know, the watershed, basically. Uh, you know, economic watershed, I think, is an important thing. So those are, those are the reactions that I had, you know, thinking about obsolescence, new paradigms, our place in nature, and looking at ourselves more anthropologically. I thought she was. Oh, um, actually, Tim pretty much answered. I don't think our vote <coughs> means anything anymore. I have all my life, and I really, when Barack Obama came along, you know, I live like in a red area, and I've been looking at the Reagans and the Bushes on the people's walls for years. I've been okay, okay. Then, you know, Barack came along. I had my name on my absentee ballot for Hillary. I said, no, there's a moment of history. you got to go right now. And I got all excited for the first time. People will do this. They will. And they did. 
for naught. I mean, I don't know. I still love the man. He might have got caught in whatever we don't know up there. But um, it makes me think more. They're all the same, and we do need a new paradigm. And sure, if everybody, but you, your inner city people aren't voting. The hillbillies down where I live are not voting. It's regular working jobs who think that it gives them something votes. And for the first time in my life, I'm actually, and because of Occupy, I think I'm not even, I haven't even been watching the elections. This may not be good. I don't know. But the other, one other thing on the side, just sort of he be uh, new age, spiritual, we were going into all this paradigm stuff before. We had Sarah, you know, mm -hmm. who was here, had her words on the floor. We had to concentrate on the word and we did some meditation. My word was respect. Mm -hmm. And you broke down later on on the respect. And it's a very big thing going on around, even though I'm not particularly spiritual. So I thought I'd like to you know, you know that. that. Yeah, I gotta tell you that yeah. um, it's the center of the whole thing. Yes. Because, you know, everyone can't be called to love everyone else. Right. I mean, we might do that, okay? Aspire like, Christians are called to love everyone, right? Yeah. Love right. that neighbor. Aspire. Right? right? But, when you're on a, uh, but when you look at the concept of love, right? <laughs> it's really soul to soul, right? It's really, right. you fall in love. You don't obey the moral rule to love. Right. You know, you, uh, you so love, is, love, love is, is an individual thing, and I think that uh, solidarity and... Um, you know, there can be neighborhoods, there can be teams, there can be uh, clubs. I don't think we want to outlaw these things. Okay? Yeah, no. But um, respect, that is universal. It's not just a matter of, well, I love this person, that's why I do this for him, or, you know, I'm, I'm in the same club as this guy and i got this obligation, i got to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to respect everybody. Mm -hmm. And the problem <coughs> is that if you're ignorant about the other, you don't know how to respect them. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we got to know about everybody in order to show them respect. Right. And that's what we, that's the goal for me of the universal history is getting to that place where we know each other, not as caricatures. Yeah. Right? Because it's funny, you go in the South mm -hmm. in the peak of white supremacy and you ask the Southerners, Southern whites, and amazingly, because the efficiency of the ideology and everyone, everyone, drinking the same Kool-Aid, they'll all tell you the same damn thing. Yeah. Our niggers are happy. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. They have the same story for you, you know? And the world ain't like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John Absolutely. Lennon, he wrote, woman is the nigger of the world. That's right. So, Wait, hold on, I wanted Darren to make sure Darren... Chassie. We talk on Facebook. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's uh, uh, Darren and I think you had some... Nora had more to say? So Darren yes. and then Nora. Yes. Darren and, and Darren and oh, then I'm Nora. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, we can go if you want. Go ahead. I understand that I just kind of put it out there mm -hmm. and put it in your face and was very dogmatic with this. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose for me doing that too. Our rights to do this are so enormous that they really can't be taken away from us. Oh. But, and this is where this conversation goes with the, well, you know, because of the influence of money and the influence of this, they're not getting the candidates, I don't really have a voice, I don't like what's going on, things aren't going fast enough. What that mentality does that keeps us from voting does is we're giving up that power. We're being convinced to. Please, please think about it. Because again, the answer is you don't like the candidates, field one. If it's it's too late to do it, write it in. If somebody shows up and says to you what your voice doesn't count, tell them. But it unless does. three billion people write in the same name, you're still nowhere. <laughs> I mean, three million I candidates. <laughs> It took us 400 years to get to Obama. Yeah. Perhaps it's going to take a little longer than two and a half years yeah. to move on from there. Yeah, yeah. It just, um, the final, I, I, what, what I wanted to say was, um, I couldn't help it. Uh, when you were talking about, um, you know, we uh, eat and we excrete, that's, I think that's kind of one of the challenges, problems that um, has happened. Um, because that's 
the corporate mentality in a sense. It's the survival of the fittest again. And uh, when in the you know 1900s all the way up to 1945, there was a huge movement called the Progressive Movement that was uh, geared towards the universality of people. That was geared towards the betterment of mankind. That was geared towards um, a more civil society. And, and one of the, one of the uh, where you had uh, people coming over from India, people coming over from all, all different spiritual leaders from around the world, economic advisors gathering together, realizing that the <coughs> system that we had in place was going to fail. It was inevitable that it was going to fail and they had to take measures uh, for it, um, which leads to war. The other thing about us, not only do we excrete and uh, eat, but we also have the ability to take an image from this room right here and send it into a machine that can actually defragment it, send it out into mm -hmm. outer space, into another uh, satellite, send it across the world, defragment it again, refragment itself, go down 